Hi everyone, it's Sylvi Martinsen here. I'm here with my dog Sylvi and we are in one of the side arms of the Oslofjord in Norway and uh, I'm preparing for a landscape uh, photograph. Um, it's a sunny, cold day. We have uh, around minus 10 degrees Celsius and at night time we are down at uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius. So it's very interesting when it, we have this uh, cold weather because then we can have uh, both the clarity but we can also have the mist and the, and the frost and the snow and the ice formations. So there are many opportunities. The most important thing you have to do if you are a landscape photographer is to go out in the field plan for field trips and make it easy to go out. So have your camera bag and tripod ready, your batteries charged and, uh, and also the memory cards emptied, your lens cleaned and uh, everything ready. Have some warm clothing and uh, I want to talk about what I have in my camera bag. So let's take a closer look. First, uh, I can tell you about this. It's a tripod, it's a Gitzo tripod and a ball head BH55 from Really Right Stuff. I have had this now for um, 13 years. Very good. And uh, this tripod is uh, five years. And uh, very solid and sturdy. So let's take a look inside my bag, what I have here. Now let's take a look at what I have inside my photo bag. Okay, open it here. I have uh, my camera. My camera, the Canon camera housing. And I have uh, on this um, call size 18mm wide angle lens. This is my favorite lens. I use it uh, probably in 90% uh, of my landscape photographs. So that's my favorite. And I also bring my 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens from Canon. 24 to 70 millimeter. It's very useful for landscape. I can both use the wide angle and I can zoom in for more details. So it's very useful for landscape photography. And I also have my 85mm, which is a very sharp lens. And I also bring this uh, microfiber cloth to clean my camera if I get some uh, water or something on the lens or on the camera. So it's very useful. Here I have my cable release. I use that to avoid camera shake. When I press the shutter and I have the polarizing filter. And some extra memory cards. And here I have extra battery. And here I have the graduated neutral density filters. Two pockets here. This one has uh, soft filter, sorry, this one has hard filters, and this one has soft filters. And I have uh, from one to five stop, so I can uh, cont control any lighting situation I encounter. And uh, these are my additional creative tools to balance the light and to get more density on the sky in a high contrast situation. So, um, very useful. And uh, also want to say one more thing about this lens. It has uh, manual focus, so I have to focus here. Uh, one advantage with that is that I save battery. So, if I use a lens with autofocus, the camera battery will be emptied very fast. But uh, when I use manual focus, I can uh, 
use a battery for one or two weeks if I only use this lens. So, very use useful. And very rarely do I use the display for uh, focusing. I look into the camera here, to the viewfinder. That also saves battery. So, uh, I think we can say one word and that's uh, simplicity. So, make it easy. Do not have too much equipment, but learn to use what you have. I'm also using uh, a ball head from Really Right Stuff. It's the BH55. It's uh, very strong. It can carry 18 kilos. And it's very easy to work with. When I compose, it's very easy to maneuver the camera. And it has this quick coupling. Open this one and attach and it's there. So from this position I can just loosen one screw here and move the camera. If I want to shoot verticals I can take it down here and move the camera in what direction I want. It's very useful. Open up and the camera has this uh, customized coupling plate. Really Right Stuff has uh, coupling plate, plates uh, customized for each camera model. So you just have to attach it one time and it's very tight. So you don't have any movements after you attach the camera on your tripod. And that gives you sharper images. To avoid camera shake, I'm also using um, a cable release, so I don't get any movements in the camera when I expose my images. And I open this here, on the side, and just plug it in, and I'm ready to shoot from here. It's very easy. This uh, cable release has no battery, so it works uh, in most situations. So I don't have to worry about bringing extra batteries for this one. So it's the it's the Canon Remote Switch RS80 N3. I found these uh, beautiful rock formations here. They will be diagonal lines in the frame, and also this uh, heart-shaped frozen pond will be interesting. And uh, ore frost here on the rock can give me good contrast so this uh, orange rock uh, will be a good contrast to the more blue sky later in the evening so what I'm going to do now I'm gonna put up my camera I'm going to compose my image and then I'm going to wait for the right light and I want to wait until the Sun is going down behind me here and uh, I'm gonna shoot in uh, the opposite direction. The sun will go down there, but I'm gonna shoot that way. And uh, what I'm hoping for is uh, some blue sky, but also a little bit crimson on the sky. And uh, I also want the earth shadow, the shadow of the earth on the sky. That will give combinations of blue and uh, crimson and blue. So it will be layers of colors and uh, the blue colors will contrast the warmer orange colors here, colors here in the foreground and um, I'm gonna start uh, putting up a camera and to get these uh, lines here into the composition I need to put my tripod up and put the, this leg straight out like this Put it on the rock here. Let's see. Maybe this one lift it down too. And this one too. Careful so the tripod legs don't get into the frame. Because this wide angle has this angle so I can take in the lines here and also the frozen pond here. 
Let's put the lid on the camera. Yes, it's perfect. I have the heart-shaped pond. I have uh, the diagonal lines here. We'll lift it back. Get a stronger image. More stronger lines leading into the center of the frame. So let's see. We have it there. And I'm going to work uh, at uh, f16. And then I will have sharpness from the foreground here and to infinity in the far background. And I'm shooting at uh, f16, aperture f16, and uh, at ISO 50 for higher quality. So I have my cable release and I'm going to use my graduated neutral density filter. I'm going to use my two-stop hard edge graduated neutrality filter. This is very good if you have a straight horizon, which I have here. And uh, I use that to balance the light between the brighter sky and the foreground in shadows. So that I get a better balance and a better density of colors on the sky. And I use it by hand holding the filter in front of the lens. I hold it close to the lens. And I need to look into the camera when I do it. And hold it here. And look in and I drag down the filter to the right positions. And I have my cable release in my left hand. Press down and take the picture. They are very, very useful. I never go anywhere without them. So if you don't have them, buy them. You can buy this from Singray and they are called Gill Ravel Graduated Neutral Density Filters. So, one more thing. Uh, when I'm working uh, away from the sun, I normally use two to three stop graduated new density filter because the contrasts are not that big when I work away from the sun but if I work towards the sun I normally use three to five stop to balance the light because there we have stronger contrasts but uh, tonight it will be enough with uh, the two stop hard edge graduated new density filter I put it in my pocket and I'm ready when the action starts in a few minutes. Here is my composition and what you see now is without a graduated neutral density filter. I'm going to put the lens, um, the filter in front of the lens and let's see here. So you take it down to the horizon, a little bit down in the water and then you see the light balance better. This is without filter and this is with filter. So it's a tremendous difference. So go and get these filters if you don't have them. It was a very nice evening. I got one really good uh, photograph and uh, I got uh, the earth shadow, I got uh, the crimson on the sky and the blue and I got the um, beautiful foreground with the rock formations. I got the frost and the ice on that small pond. Uh, tonight I only took one composition but I worked myself into the situation and uh, as the light improved I took uh, different images. So tonight probably I took only 
15 images not so much but it's better to focus on uh, high quality and not uh, jump around and uh, take uh, thousands of mediocre photos so one very strong image is better than 10 mediocres so now it's time to go in warm up and start up the computer and upload the images into Adobe Lightroom and I'll see you there in the develop module thank you hi everyone I'm back from the field session and I am in front of the computer and uh, I have uh, uploaded the photo into Adobe Lightroom and um, let's see what we can do I'm here in the develop module and you can see that the colors and contrasts are very dull because this uh, picture is not developed so when we upload a raw file from the camera the colors and contrast is very weak and uh, we have to develop it so in the old days of film we could buy different films with different qualities strong color or um, and different tones contrasts and we can also buy black black and white films and uh, here uh, we have all these old film types film types inside uh, this um, raw file so i can fine tune it wherever i want and uh, let's see what we can do so first i want to increase the contrast a little bit Drag the slider up to around 22 and I want to lift the shadows you can see here the shadows here are a little bit dark so I can take the shadow shadows slider here drag it up you see here then we get more details in the shadows and I want to increase the clarity it sharpens the medium tones in the image and I want to drag that up to around 25 and we get a little bit more sharp and crispy image and I want to increase the vibrance so drag the slider upwards and end up around 45 we have now already already now a better picture and uh, now we need to fine-tune some things first we go down to details and I want to go to the sharpening tool sharpen image drag it up to 58 yeah, 50 58 there and radius 1.1 and I want to use the masking tool and the masking tool is areas in the pictures that we don't need to sharpen so Press the option button and drag the slider up and then you see the dark areas is the dark areas are areas where the image will not be sharpened because you don't need sharpening on these blank surfaces like the sky and the water surface and the ice there around 43 not so bad was very nice and now I see I have to do something with the, the color temperature so but I don't want to do the same all over I want to warm up the foreground a little bit so I get more of the orange colors here but I, if I do that if I do an overall color temperature adjustment I drag the slider to the right but then you see I get more orange in the foreground but I lose the blueness on the sky see here I go back so so I want to split the color temperature so set this as shot and I want to use the built-in graduated neutral density filter here and with that I can fine-tune the color temperature 
only on the foreground and then let the sky be as it is because then I keep the blueness here and the crimson here because I like the contrast between the blue and this crimson purple crimson here so let's see when I want to work on the foreground with the graduated neutral density filter here I click press the shift button and then I drag upwards when I press the shift button the lines will be straight so I do like this and you see now we have three lines everything above sorry everything under the lowest line here will have full effect of what I do out here and everything in between this and this one the upper one will be a graduation from full effect here and to zero above here I can also tilt everything so you see I can take the middle line here and turn everything around and I can also drag this upwards or downwards by taking this ring here so I want to keep it around here and then I can fine-tune only the color temperature in this area on the rock I want a little bit warmer tones on the foreground drag the slider up there not too not like this because then it looks very strange but a little bit warmer I think around here that's good and I also want to do something here in the upper part and uh, that is then I press a new one here and I drag the slider downwards click drag the slider downwards and take the ring drag it a little bit more down what I want to do now is to lift the shadows a little bit more here so I go here to the shadows you see here a little bit more details in the forest here I think that's enough now I think also I want more contrast here on the foreground then I can go back and open the graduated filter once again then increase the contrast in this lower area of the frame a little bit more and then a little bit up on the highlights not too much drag this a little bit up good and I also want to do a little bit more here on these uh, lines so I go to the brush tool so I want to light up these uh, lines a little bit so I take 0 0.10 here on the exposure take the brush a little bit small small brush here and then I paint over these nice lines here then we will also increase the contrast on the foreground yeah I think that's that's good we can do a little bit alongside this small frozen pond Let's see what we can do if we if I drag the slider more here. You see, this is the area I worked in. We don't want to overdo it like this. I just want to tint or more lines here. I think around there. 
bit bit more here. Yes. I think the colors up here are good. We don't need more saturation here. But uh, maybe on the foreground, we need a little bit more. So I go back again, open up the graduated nutrency filter and open the same graduation here. We see then we can increase the saturation in that area. You see this is too much, but and this is too little, it turns into a black and white photo. So we can go a little bit up there on the foreground. Slightly up on the contrast. Well, not so bad. Let's see it in full frame and then I press the F, F button. Here we have it. Nice. I like these uh, nice lines here. I like the shape of this. It's a heart shaped frozen pond. And I like the frost here on the rock. So we have a lot of contrast here and uh, i like the colors here and here we, you can see the earth shadow the shadow of, of the earth because the sun was behind the horizon and under the horizon um, and then the earth gives this shadow here on the sky so and we have the crimson and then we have the blue again so i like this image so hope you enjoyed um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, you will be alerted when i post new videos and uh, i see you in the next thank you for watching